Hi, Dr. Marianne Cintron. I'm so glad you're here. I'm going to show you what Rover Reader looks like and um, walk you through some of this. We're going to call this taking a deeper dive. You're going to really enjoy. So this is an introduction video. Each one of these um, tabs will have their own one to two minute video to help you understand. But right now I want to show you, we have alphabet, which will be for maybe younger siblings of older students who are doing this. If you have elementary school age students, and then you might have a kinder or a preschool sibling that's wanting to learn um, their alphabet and they're wanting to do a big brother or sister is doing, you can use the alphabet and you can do the vowels. But for this summer reading program, you really want to live in the syllable types. You want to live in the reading fun if you want Minecraft and the games. So the wonderful, wonderful word lists are what we're going to be adding Minecraft in for um, fall when the school starts, but they're still good to look at and, I'll sh and you'll see why, because we do have the same spinner. Sometimes we'll have the sentences with the words in it, but the Minecraft isn't in the wonderful word list yet. But the syllable types are what I wanna show you because students who struggle with reading, fluency and comprehension struggle with multisyllabic words. So Orton Gillingham has six syllable types, but there are also zoo syllable types that I was taught in my Orton Gillingham training, which I thought were a lot of fun. So each zoo syllable type will have its own explanation for you. you and they're in number order here. And my recommendation is go through these in number order. <clears throat> Excuse me, we have um, one is rabbit. Rabbit has two vowels with two consonants in the middle. And if you wanna do some coding after each lesson, maybe in a second hour or maybe the following day or maybe save it for a Friday, you wanna put, um, underline your vowels with green, code the vowels with a V on top and put two Cs over the consonants so for the rabbit words, we're gonna divide right between those two consonants. For the monster rabbit words, we have three consonants. So those three will have, two will be a blend like SP or ST. Um, you wanna keep the blend together and let the, the third consonant be on its own. Camel words have a short vowel sound in the first syllable, and we're gonna keep the consonant with the first syllable because we say it protects the short vowel sound, cam L. And again, you can underline, have your child underline the vowels in green and put a C above the consonant. For tiger words, you're gonna have a long vowel in the first syllable. And so the consonant's gonna go with the second syllable. Have your child underline the I and the E and put a C above the consonant G. And you'll see how the consonant stays, stays with the second syllable. Now, turtle words end with a consonant LE. What we say is consonant LE, count back three. So we really go to the end of the word and we move our a little scoop under the E, under the L, under the consonant. That's where we divide our syllable. So there'll be B-L-E, Z-L-E, T-L-E, P-L-E, but we call it consonant L-E, count back three. So you're gonna have your colored pens out and go to the end of the word and count back three. That's where you're gonna draw your syllable line. So number six are called lion syllable types when two vowels have two different sounds. So lion, and this um, syllable type will show you other words that are similar. And we're just gonna underline the Vs individually, the vowels individually, put a line right in the middle. 
one, go, one vowel goes with the first syllable, one vowel goes with the second syllable. Egret syllable types. Now, egret is a beautiful, slender bird. So the egret words have a long vowel that stands alone in the word. So underline your E and put a V and put a line right after egret. That's going to determine, that's going to show the syllable type. And you'll be surprised when words crop up, you can tell your child, this is an egret word. This is a lion word. Or ask them, do they recognize the syllable type? The students are going to remember rabbit, camel, tiger, and turtle. Um, but lion and egret are a little bit more challenging. Catfish. So number eight syllable type is a catfish. We would call it a compound word. Two separate words come together for a whole new word. That's your catfish. The dog, dog syllable, what do you think? CVC, consonant, vowel, consonant. That's just your basic word, cat, dog, hat, man. It's two consonants um, around a vowel. And you may even have just a vowel with the ending consonant, which is also called a closed syllable word. You don't need a consonant in the front, like the word as. But anyway, um, we call that the dog, so the dog animal. And weasel is the trickiest because it's vowel team. So a vowel team means two vowels say one sound. So you want to be sure you teach the, the rabbit, the camel, and the tiger definitely before you teach the weasel because we have rabbit-like weasel words, we have tiger-like weasel words, and we have camel-like weasel words where the two vowels together say one sound, but sometimes it's a long sound like a tiger-like weasel word. Sometimes it's a short vowel sound like the camel type. So the consonant is gonna stay with the first syllable. And sometimes two vowels are gonna make one sound, but it's gonna be a rabbit-like syllable word. So you'll have the vowel team, which you'd underline as, as a vowel sound, and you'll have another vowel um, after two, maybe even three consonants if you have a monster rabbit-like word. So each um, syllable type will have a one to two minute explanation when you open it up. The vowel teams are actually introducing the camel-like, weasel-like, and rabbit-like vowel teams. And I'm not sure. Uh, well, so you'd want to listen to the vowel teams before you listen to weasel. Now the non-zoo syllable types, and I have to say all these have Minecraft, starting with Minecraft. We have, um, I will go into one and show you. It's going to start with a Minecraft video. And it's, I'll just zip through it to so see we have, there's a little bit of narration for you because you might not know what this means. So the narration helps you. And you can also um, let your child read it on their own. You can let them repeat you. Or you can just, yeah, if you wanna say it and have them repeat it. So here we have a spinner that you're gonna click under this arrow and it's gonna spin. These are all rabbit words and there's explanation as to why. And then um, it ends. So on some of the other ones, you'll even have a flash card. So this one, these are the spinners. So then we have a game that's gonna have you connect the first syllable to the second syllable, games in general, and then a return to the zoo syllable types. So they're all gonna follow that model. Now the non-zoo, we started this two years ago with the bossy R's because I just have such a kick teaching the bossy R's because um, imagine, they, so they all have Minecraft and then they all have 
I'm going to do the ER. They all start with Minecraft. And here's what it's going to look like. I don't know if I can advance quicker through here. So this is the ER. There's some narration going on right now. That's why it's slowing down for you. But I've turned the volume down so you don't hear the narration. So it, it's explaining the ER in two syllable words. So the neat thing is um, ER has day one, day two, and day three. So day two has different types of ER words, like we have ER in the second syllable. So we have a Minecraft video, then we have our spinner, and then we have um, phonogram cards. And then we also have, um, let me escape out of this. Yeah. And we have sentences. I gotta close that there. We have sentences. And when you hover over the box, look at this. It enlarges, it changes color. The background changes color. See if your child can read it on their own. And if not, you read it, let them read after you. So this was designed by a man who's dyslexic. Dave Rover, Dave Weber is dyslexic. And um, he knows what helped him learn. So um, then we have day three for ER, which are gonna be the, is the comparative use. So if you wanna check this out, cause ER is part of a comparative um, word. So we have, er or est so it's a suffix but anyway this is going to talk about comparatives and here we have faster taller bigger you could tell your child what comparatives mean here we have the font the slider so the top one is a spinner this is a slider and sometimes the kid like kids like the variety and sometimes, you know, you might want to just do one one day, do another the other day. So when you hover over the box, you're going to see the sentence that's going to change color and get bigger and brighter. Amazing, right? So that's really fun. You have the option to do a game after every one. So reward your child when they do really well. And be, be sure you put a sticker on your Minecraft uh, chart and right on the back what was done and um, the date. That's how you're gonna monitor your child's progress, which is great to show the teacher at the beginning of the year. And also you can bring it to an IEP to show that your child learned this. So um, let me show you OR has day one and day two, and then there's games. So we always have a tab up the tabs are, will be at the top to go back to the home page. So we have the bossy R's. And um, for the fall, we'll have vowel consonant E. We we'll just take some time to put all that together. So I'm going to return to the home page. What I want to show you are the wonderful word lists. Now we don't have Minecraft in these yet, but how many of you want to show your child the different sounds for ED? Ed, D, and T. And then here are the three sounds mixed up. So I'm going to show you Ed. ED sounds like Ed. The van got rested and then Ted. Mom planted the, the tulip bulbs, which lasted a long time. So um, this is how you sound. So back to the wonderful word list. 
So your ED has the sounds of D, the sounds of T. Let me show you how we mix them all. She got dressed and got packed fast. You hear the T there? She dumped the sand and rushed home. You hear the T there again? He licked his chops and he thanked the hostess. You hear the T again? The branch drifted in the pond. He invented, so this is, these are the different sounds of the ED. And if you wanna review one or the other, we put those options on the bottom. Or if you want to advance to the other, those are all to the bottom. And the wonderful word list, since you're already down here, the wonderful return button is right there at the bottom. If you don't see the return button at the top, just jump to the bottom. I know searching for the right button can be very uh, time consuming and frustrating. So we're trying to have the buttons at the top and also the bottom for you to access them quickly. So the wonderful word list won't have the Minecraft in them at this time, but there's some wonderful uh, word, uh, sounds that the children will be learning. Here we have the wild old, the eild old oast, eind old, and you may know the mnemonic, most old trolls are wild but kind. So that's how we teach the wild old words. Well, here's our vowel consonant E, under the word list, it's actually a syllable type, but we we're putting them here with vowel consonant E for now. Maybe we're gonna move them <laughs> by June 1st, we'll see. So we have C, E, G, E, you know, the, the, these, word, these letters are um, changed. The sounds are changed when you add uh, C, E, when you add the E, I, and the Y. So um, K, E, I, M, K, E, I, and Y says the K sound. Some words with that, some words with O-W says O or ow. And um, we have W-H, C-K, C-H, and T-C-H. So I follow the scope and sequence of my Orton-Gillingham training. And these were right up at the top that the children needed to learn. So let's go back to the home page because I wanna show you the reading fun. So right up, right here is going to be a little introduction on it. But what I want you to see is the four weeks. So since this is a five-week summer reading adventure, you can spread things out a little bit. Do some coding of the, of the syllables a couple of the days or on a Friday or even afterwards. Um, if you happen to go out of town for a week, you could still be right on track. But within each week, there's four things. So we're going to label these actually A, B, C, and D. So A will be a doodly story and a read along. There's three of them for three of your days. B is going to be text message reading. Okay, this is just week one. C is going to be you design. This is where your child designs the, puts the color of the font, the size, the letting or the spacing in between the sentences, the spacing in between the words. Fun, fun, fun. This is really what your password is needed for. So I can't show you this. And then the Minecraft reading is going to be at the end. And our, my co-partner, um, or my partner, Dave uh, Weber, uh, created some of these stories, but his daughter has also written some of these stories. And so she reads the story and you list, your child listens. So there's part one, part two, and part three, which your child will listen on day one, day two, day three. And we want to be sure you do your reading warm up first. So my intent is to move this up. But for now, it's down there. But I'm going to show you one of the stories. So you have a doodly. So this is a story by Dave Weber's daughter. 
who's about 11 years old. And she's talking while the pictures are being drawn. Very fun and exciting. The second one, let's see how this is going, I can show you. Reviewing the hard words from the story. So this is really cool because it talks about the words in the story, because we're gonna get your child reading the story on their own. And there's a question, where did she sell rocks? And reading tips. Okay, so reading tips, deeper dive. Okay, so I'm gonna move on. So here is where your child reads along with the story. And your child can actually read with you as you read. Picture, then we get words. And then we have some pictures. So dyslexic children love pictures, three-dimensional, they love colors, and this is why this is so effective, okay? Then have your child read it by himself. When I sold rugs, so there are all the words, and you notice how they're spread out, so they're not running into each other, isn't that wonderful? So that is just one story. Well, that's for, okay, so now we're gonna go back to week one again. Then we have story two and go to, so remember these are gonna be A, B, C, and D. And you're gonna do each one every day. So, oh, but we have five days a week and there's only three. Well, um, then maybe you won't do these for two of the days and you wanna do some review of coding and that's okay. Always be sure you do your reading warm up. So let me show you what um, the reading looks like. If this is Minecraft, and I'm gonna say, yes, we've used it before. This is Dave's daughter, Layton, actually reading. So I've muted it, like I said, so you can't hear her story, but she actually takes you through a story. If I were to wait here a little bit, you're gonna see the motion. There it is. She's reading the story. And it's just really cool. So here's the information that she's reading. So I'm gonna go back. Now you can actually have your child play a mini game when you get to the end, or you can um, go back and do some more reading. So her first story is The Loch Ness Monster, part one. On day two, you read part two. On day three, you read part three. And these designs, I wish I could show you, but I just can't because that needs your special password. Um, so fun reading. So there's two home pages. You go back to the reading page where you have your options for weeks one, two, three, and four. Or you go back to the whole summer reading adventure, which gives you your syllable types, your wonderful word lists. So I'm going to go back to the fun home reading page and go into week two, show you this is going to be marked A, B, C, and D. So week two um, has the polar bear attack, chapters one and two and chapter three to the end. Now, Dave Weber wrote this with his daughter, Layton. So this might be exciting and motivate your child to read and write with you. I've written a story with my daughter when she was in um, 
fifth grade. It's called Do Pets Go to Heaven? And it's a story we wrote when we put our little kitty down after surgery. <laughs> anyway, um, so we're going to go back to the reading homepage. I want to show you week three. This will be a little information if you even need to listen to it. You might not even listen to it. So we have your doodlies, day one and two, your text messaging. I'd be very excited to hear what your child likes the most. You're you designing the sentences and the letting and the color and then Minecraft reading the story. So A, B, C, and D. D will be the story. This one's the mighty gorilla part one and two. And, you know, I, I'm not sure if it's going to take the full 30 minutes to get all this done, but I'm assuming it does. We'd like you to spend 30 minutes in this reading section. And here's your warm up again. I'm going to see if we can move that to the top so it stands out really fast. And then week four, this story is written by our friend Dave Weber, and it's about time travel fishing with the cousins. Oops, I don't know why that did that. So anyway, that is it. So on the bottom is return to the adventure. So the only thing I didn't show you, and I'm gonna show you now are the games. There's always gonna be a little information here if you need it, but the games are all here. And this will show you how to toggle. Let me see if it clicks on it. I think he's actually updating that. Well, it has to advance. I don't know how long it might take <laughs> a couple seconds, but we have all these games and they're short little games. They're just nice rewards for your child after the day's work, okay? After you do the first half hour, you can do a short game. After you do the second half hour, you can do a short game. And you can always have your child repeat the games on different days. So we're gonna to return to the home page. Oh, so um, if you were to click on this icon, this is my step-by-step -step dyslexia solution because I developed a reading program. This gets you to that page to learn about my reading program. David Weber created something. Well, he, his is you know how you wanna purchase, how to get into his website if you wanna purchase his uh, program because he does a lot more than just what we're doing here. And then here's the return to the homepage. And then we're back to the beautiful um, six options of what you're gonna work with. And there we have it. So remember every um, section is gonna have a one to two minute video explaining to you a little bit more in depth. And you definitely will need that when you do the syllable types. So let's just go back to the syllable types to give you that little refresher. We have rabbit, monster rabbit, camel, tiger, turtle, lion rule, egret, catfish, dog, and weasel. And if you wonder why I didn't put dog and catfish first, because most kids know their CVC words and catfish, um, some kids know about compound words, but I wanna dive right in, start teaching the rabbit syllable, monster rabbit. I wanna start teaching these because this is what's gonna help the children start being fluent readers. And then we have the bossy R's. Oh, if you click the bossy R overview, it's gonna give you the whole word list. Here we go, here's all the words that we review. We have the comparatives there. And then we even have the, um, the tabs if you wanna go right to AR, right to ER right to IR, isn't that cool? So that's really fun. Then you are right to the AR and you do day one, days two. This just depends how much time your child needs to spend on it. Day two, let me see, you have a Minecraft. Remember, Bossy R's has a Minecraft. This is what some of the words look like, AR words. And we have uh, the spinner, 
Usually we have the spinner and then the flash card looks a little bit different. And we have sentences. We're still tweaking a little bit of this guy. So your patience is just appreciated. This is, uh, the ink is still fresh on the page. So we're returning to our home page. And there you have it. I'm gonna stop my share. And so we're also creating a frequently um, FAQ page. If you have any questions just from this brief introduction, please email me and I'll add it and we'll send it in the future um, emails that we send out. So Dr. Marianne Sintron signing out. I hope this has been very helpful and uh, bye for now.